I'm presenting about the techniques of uh, building the Elizaro frame. A successful Elizaro frame must be fixed to the bone in a stable manner. Must, be, must prevent uh, gross motion of bone fragments and must provide the ability to manipulate the bone fragments to achieve compression, distraction, and deformity correction. Uh, the rings are the most important and the most remarkable components of the frame. They enable frame building, they support the K-wires, and they support the extended sections of the frame. Adequate fixation of a fracture or an osteotomy requires at least two levels and two different directions. The main components of the frame are the proximal system, the distal system, and the connections in between. We will start by the proximal system. It holds the proximal fragment. It enables external control and is composed of at least two rings. The first ring is the proximal, the first ring in the proximal system is the proximal main support ring or the guide ring. It guides the other components so its location must be determined at first using the CR. This ring carries the entire uh, frame load. So uh, it must be applied to the most proximal and the most steady part of the bone. The ring is applied perpendicular to the anatomic axis of the bone. The longer the distance between the proximal and distal rings in each block, the more stable the frame is. Now, how to measure the ring size? The ring is measured on the patient. We measure the largest portion of the, of the region. And we must use rings of the same size. At least two finger breadth of space should be left between the interior of the ring and the skin. Now, there is a special situation. How would you apply a full ring to the proximal femur or humerus? This is impossible, given the unique anatomic structure and the relationship uh, with the hip and shoulder joints. So how did Elizarov solve this? Elizarov used the so-called Russian arch for both the proximal femur and the, and the proximal humerus. Uh, he used uh, trans, uh, transfixing K wires. This was risky. Catani and Catanio added uh, their modification to the to for more safe uh, fixation. They used uh, the Italian femoral arch, femoral arch for the proximal femur and the omega ring for the proximal humerus. They fixed it both with shan screws. That means that they use the fixation instead of uh, transfixation. Now the second ring in the proximal block is the pushing bowling uh, ring. This one in the circle, in the red circle. This is a dynamic component of this block. It is used to apply compression and distraction uh, on the fracture or non-union site. Uh, this pushing bowling ring is applied to the distal end of the proximal fragment to achieve stable fixation. However, microfractures at the distal end of the proximal fragment may be present. So if we apply K wires to these uh, microfractures or osteoporotic bone ends, compression distraction mechanism cannot be used and fixation of the whole ring becomes insufficient. Thus, you must apply your K wires about four centimeters away from this weak zone. Now we come to the connections of the proximal block. If we connect the proximal main support ring and the pushing pulling ring with three or four threaded rods, we now get the proximal system. If three rods are uh, used, they are applied anteromedially, posteromedially, and posterolaterally. While if four rods are used, 
apply them anteromedially, anterolaterally, posteromedially, and posterolaterally. Threaded rods must be parallel to the bone, both in frontal and in sagittal, and must be parallel to each other. The distance between the rods must be as equal as possible. To achieve this, the rods must be fixed to holes in equal distances from the center line. The proximal block is uh, completed, is finally completed by addition of transosseous K wires. Now we come to the distal system. Like the proximal system, the distal system fixes, fixes the distal fragment. It enables manipulation of the fragment and is composed of at least two rings. The first ring in the distal block is the distal support ring. This is the main support, the main component that fixes the distal fragment. Therefore, it has to be, to be fixed to the most distal and steady part of the bone. The wires must be fixed three to five centimeters proximal to the joint line, so as not to prevent joint movements. Near the knee and elbow, five eighth rings should be used to allow free mobility. The distal support ring must be either fixed or dynamic, or maybe either fixed or dynamic. It must be fixed perpendicular to the anatomical axis of the distal fragment, either with two K wires or one K wire and one shans screw. Now we come to the second ring uh, of the distal block, which is a distal guide ring. This has to be fixed to the most steady and most proximal part of the distal segment, perpendicular to the anatomical axis. And like its, its proximal counterpart, it is fixed three to four centimeters away from the end of the fragment. Now we come to the connections of the distal block. If we connect the distal support ring and the distal guide ring, with three or four threaded rods, we now get the distal system. Finally, the distal block is created by fixing the distal system with transosseous K wires. Now we come to the system connections. The proximal and distal blocks are now built. And now we want to manipulate the fragments externally. This is possible through the augmented connections between the proximal and distal blocks. Through this, we can do compression, distraction, deformity corrections in the form of translation, rotation, and angulation. These corrections are generally formed with hinges. Finally, we can do our reductions. And reduction is usually a combination of the three previous maneuvers. Now what uh, happens if we connect the systems, the system incorrectly? We will end up with chondrolysis or even dislocation at the nearby joints. After discussing the components and the connections of the frame, we now come to uh, how the frame is built. The frame can be built either intraoperatively or on the, day the, on the day before the operation. This saves much uh, time during the operation and the resulting frame is the same in both cases. We start with progressive construction of the frame step by step. Step one, identify the location of the ring on X-ray and on the patient. Step two, insert the guide K wire into the tibia, parallel to the joint. Step three, you must centralize the tibia during this and leave at least two centimeters central circular distance uh, between the ring and the skin. Step four, fix the K wire to the appropriate hole uh, in the ring and tighten uh, the far end uh, initially. 
uh, then tension the wire and, ten, I, and tighten the near end of the key wire too. In step five, we fix the pushing pulling ring uh, in the same manner and the tension uh, and then we tension the wires. Step six, connect the two rings using uh, connecting uh, structures to make the proximal block. We generally use uh, threaded rods, uh, but uh, if more stabilization is required in longer distances, telescopic, uh, telescopic uh, rods and tubes may also be used. Step seven, the distal system is now started. To build it, fix the pushing pulling ring perpendicular to the axis of distal fragment. This ring is initially left unfixed because uh, its location may need to be modified later. In step eight, uh, insert the first key wire in the distal fragment perpendicular to the axis of distal fragment parallel to the ankle joint. Then fix the distal base uh, support ring uh, with the key wires. Step nine, the distal support ring is connected to the guide ring with threaded rods uh, like this. And the final step in which uh, the guide ring is fixed to the bone using uh, key wires, then the distal block is created. This is a distal block after connection of the guide ring uh, to the uh, bone with key wires. Now we come to the other method of frame assembly, which is the prefabricated frame. The frame can be built one day before the operation after evaluation of the patient and x-rays. The required final adjustments are uh, performed using radiographs on the patient to avoid loss of operative time. And uh, the sterilized uh, prepared frame is placed as a whole over the limb. And the frame is transfixing, transfixed to the bone after necessary corrections of the distances between uh, rings. First, you must uh, fix the proximal supporting ring, then the distal uh, stabilizing ring. And the intermediate rings are finally transfixed. These are my references.